Shalom, all. all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai Bahasham, Rechakodash, Yahweh being the name of the Heavenly Father, whom this world ignorantly calls God, the Holy One of Israel, in the name of His only begotten Son, Yahweh Shai, whom this world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, in the name of the Holy Spirit. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone who rule well, and peace and mercy to the hopeful elect, those men that are doing His work in sincerity and in truth across the four corners of the earth. Presenting their bodies as a living sacrifice on the highways and hedges for the name of Yahweh Basham Al Shai. And uh, much love to the one third and the innumerable multitude of you believers out there, of you Israelites. To you all, I say shalom and greetings. And Lord willing, this lesson is edifying through the Spirit. Excuse me. All right. So, um, you know, this this lesson, I'm pretty, I, I got scriptures, you know, um, to back up. Um, I, but because the article that I have here, I'm just going to, you know, just. I'm not even going to read really through it because you can understand through the spirit what it's really talking about. But um, it's an article here from Kiplinger um, and it says nearly 70 percent of the richest Americans don't feel wealthy. OK, it says a report shows that 68 percent of America's most affluent people do not consider themselves wealthy. Right. So, you know, the people out here in this society with a lot of money, a lot of wealth, a lot of riches, you know, in, in, in America. They're not feeling that uh that sense of wealth that you would have when you're just making a lot of money. It's starting to feel pressurized to everybody, okay? And so, you know, and this made me also think of, you know, the poor, you know, and the truly, I'm talking about the poor people who, who don't have, who have less, right? Because you got, you know, they say the middle class is dwindling away, but most time it's like uh, you got the really wealthy and you got the, the poor, Basically, it's two classes really here, you know, and uh, uh, I was even uh, watching Tron and on Tron, he said his dad, he, his dad was lost in the game or whatever. And his dad asked him, what is society like? He said, you know, the rich are getting richer and the poor are getting poorer. That was what he said to him, you know, but now in this today's economy, the poor are getting poorer and the rich are getting poorer. OK, <laughs> it's, it's all going downhill, man. All right, but it says there are more millionaires in North America than ever before. But making it into the millionaires club is not what it once was, making many people feel their net worth is average. Okay. It says uh, this includes people who have a net worth of more than $10 million. That's crazy, man. It says um, this survey conducted this past September and October asks how people view their wealth, what they value most, who they turn to for advice, and what keeps them up at night. The report also highlighted concerns over the loss and value of their investments due to inflation, geopolitical pressures, a volatile stock market, and the climate crisis affecting the value of their homes. Uh, um, other risks include financial fraud, the competitiveness, competitiveness of the domestic economy, job loss, and lower profits from business ventures. So, you know, uh, that's pretty much the part that I'm going to tag and uh, that that but they said the definition for rich is changing for many. OK. And so as we live in these last days, which these are the last days of the so-called white man's rulership, America's rulership, the Edomite rulership, the Edomite supremacy. OK. As we come into these last days, you know, the world needs to understand that your financial status is not going to harbor you salvation. Your financial status is not going to bring you closer to the heavenly father. Okay. It says, uh, Proverbs 11 and four, it says, riches profit not in the day of wrath, but righteousness delivereth from death. Okay. Your, your riches are not going to benefit you in, in the, on judgment day. Okay. Your riches are not going to benefit you, uh, uh, and when uh, in World War Three, your riches are not going to benefit you of there's an American invasion upon this land. Right. They think that that's going to save them. You know, and Revelation, the sixth chapter goes into the rich men being able to put themselves in in bunkers, essentially. Right. But those you're not even a lot of those people, a lot of those people who have those. They're not going to be able to get those. Those are those are made for men of the Lord. You, you So, you know, they're they're doing a service. The Lord is having them do a service for uh, the men of Yahweh Bashem El Shai, 
who have stayed firm and the men that have believed. Okay, so this is a very spiritual time, a very biblical time that we're living in. And so all of these people with exceeding great finances, you know, the, the reason why in the world that the people feel like money is always the ticket out because the scriptures do say money answereth all things and money is a defense. But in the day when your money, when the dollar bill has negative value, what is going to be your defense? What is going to be your answer? When, you know, uh, um, who knows? There may be a segue period where the dollar has no money, right? And then uh, the CHIP is on the way to get implemented. You never know. What What is going to be your value? That In that day, uh, uh, being an Israelite, being a, a, a having faith is going to be your currency. Okay. So in that day, what are you, what are you going to trade with? Right. We're, we're, we always say we're storing up shekels against that evil day. So what is the Edomite going to do when his money and his guns fail him? Okay. He's, he's going to be powerless. And this goes for you. You two thirds of you Israelites too think it's all about money. The scriptures say labor, not to be rich. Okay, this is Wisdom of Solomon 5 and 7. And this is the mindset of a two-third so-called black, Hispanic, and Native American man, woman, and child. It says, we wearied ourselves in the way of wickedness and destruction. Yea, we have gone through deserts where, lay, where there lay no way. But as for the way of the Lord, we have not known it. You see, they, the, the way of the Lord, our people aren't focused on knowing the way of the Lord. Only the elect are. OK, so you're not going to know that way because all you think about is, is money and chasing a bag. It says, what has pride profited us or what good has riches with our vaunting brought us? You see, uh, what good has riches with our vaunting? Let me let me get the um, the definition for that word vaunting. It's, it sounds like like boasting to vaunt something. All right. Yep. It says of a boastful nature. OK, so it says what? He says, or what good hath riches with our boasting brought us, right? So you have Jake out here boasting how much money they got. You know, uh, you be hearing people on them damn shows, I'm a millionaire. Congratulations, my boy. Ha, ha. But what about, are you a millionaire with the most high, right? Are you, are you, are you, is your faith stacked up so high that you don't got, you won't have nothing to worry about in the times of trouble that are coming upon America? Do you have so much money? that uh, uh, you're going to be in a good standing with the Heavenly Father. Because in these coming times, Yahweh Shem Al Shai is going to be your only stay. All right? Hey, when the Lord was speaking to the young rich ruler in the New Testament, did he not say, sell uh, sell all that thou hast? All right? He, and he said the man left away sorrowful. He went away weeping and sorrowful. Because you people, you think your riches are everything. But... You're going to be, it says, you're, um, seek ye first the kingdom of the most high and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. All right. But y'all seek wealth first. You seek money first. And there's nothing wrong with having money. But when you put money as your premier, premier focus, you wake up in the morning and money's on your mind. That's the first thing you think about is how can I make some money today? How much, you know, and that's some of the things they spoke about was a volatile stock system. Stock market, right? And, and and you for anybody that's been putting money in stocks and crypto, it hasn't been as secure. It hasn't been as promising. It hasn't been as good for people out there. So now a lot of these people, they are starting to feel like they don't really have millions is because we know Americans, Americans don't uh, spend within their uh, uh, their limits, within their budget. What Americans want to do, they always want to seem bigger, better, and badder than they really are. So once they get an increase, right, you want a bigger house, you want a bigger car, you want a more expensive payments, you want finer clothes, you want a badder woman, you want more children. You see, and so when these things come, what happens when you lose a job? What happens when the stock market not busting like you thought it was? The real estate isn't as promising as it used to be, right? So all of these people who got great wealth, they're going to have more, a hey, what would they say, uh, more money, more problems? And usually, that's not always the case. But in this sense, because now, when, you, when you're 
if your rent was, well, if you got $7,000 rent and you lost your job, that's harder to come up with than a, a, a rent that's only a, a $1,000. You see? So they don't, they, and they're not going to know how, to, people don't know how to decrease until they get evicted. Right? They don't say, hey, yo, you know what, let me try to get out my lease and live somewhere else. They're not going to try to do that. They'd rather get evicted first thinking that they're going to get it. Right? It says, all verse 9, all those things are passed away like a shadow and as a post that hasted by. You see? So th that money is going to be going like a shadow. You're going to be like, man, you know, that, that money has come and gone, man. Hey, that's another Mason did you, uh, but that's another Mace line. In my life, yeah, well, it was on his song, yeah. In my life, money comes and goes. You know, it comes and goes. And this time, it's going to be going more and more than more than it's coming. All right? This is 1 Timothy 6 and 6. But godliness with contentment is great gain. Right? So godliness with contentment. But see, we're living in a godless nation. All right? A nation that doesn't lead, but lead, live their lifestyles by the most high. You got great amounts of atheists out here, great amounts of non-believers. You got Christians fooling everybody, thinking that the Most High uh, is a so-called white man and his son name is Jesus, which is absolutely false, right? You got them. You got the pastors stealing money from them, misguiding them, and misleading them, all right? You got an uh, increase of people believing in in uh, Islam. You know, it's just like it's a godless nation. Right, Islam is a carnal religion. It's not based on the spirit, right? It's based on the flesh, and the scriptures say that. Okay, but you, this is a godless nation. The only people that have the Most High in their lives are the hopeful elect. Okay, it's a and nobody's content, right? Godliness with contentment. See, that's why we're able to be more content. It's because we have godliness with us. We have we. It, the scriptures say, "Give me neither riches nor poverty." So. We content. We're like, hey man, you can you can pay your bills. You got food on your table. You can take care of you and yours. You content, man. You know, it's like, do you do we want more? Sure, but we know that this ain't our kingdom. We know that this ain't the time for us to just be balling and prevailing out here, okay? But hey, the Lord says we're gonna give us great abundance. We just gotta be patient, all right? It says, for we brought nothing into this world, and in the certain we can carry nothing out. E e Esau. They carrying that same Egyptian mind, like if they get all this money, they can take it in a tomb with them and bury women and take it to the afterlife. And you can't take none of this stuff with you if you pass, man, if you perish. Right? But Esau thinks storing up his treasure, hey, storing up his treasures for the last days. Right? It says, and having food and raiment, let us be there with content. So having food, clothing, shelter, right? You're supposed to be content, but people are like, oh, I want to. I want the fanciest beach house. I want the I want the the Lamborghini, you know. I want to travel everywhere. That's the woman's mindset, all right? Be broke and want to travel everywhere and be harlots, right? This place is bugged out. It says, but they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and hurtful lusts which drown men in destruction and perdition. And see, that's what we're getting, A, hey, Men are get get more money and go out here and do reckless things, reckless behaviors, doing things they shouldn't be doing in the first place. That's why this is and seeing the kingdom of heaven when the Israelites are ruling to have great wealth is not going to be a, a thing of detriment. It's not going to be for your demise because we're not going to be living foolishly and recklessly. OK, we're going to do great, amazing things, but we're not going to be uh, subject to uh, 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 inflation. We're not going to be subject to a real estate crisis. We're not going to be subject to a plague and famine, all right, and a, a, a fiat dollar or the sea hip. We're not going to be subject to those things, all right? It says, for the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some covered it after they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. And so, you know, many men have erred from the faith and through money, you'll, you'll destroy yourself. The love of money is the root of all evil, man, all right? And it says, uh, Pierce themselves. Y'all gonna people out here, they gonna take that stuff. They got so much money. They, you, they let them have they say oh, access over 10 million. If they say, hey, either you lose all your money or we'll give you uh we'll give you five million, but you gotta take this C hit. They're gonna they gonna line up to take it. Just to hold on to the the the, the little riches they got. Five million dollars 
as nice as it sounds, it really ain't nothing. It's becoming less and less and less. And now you sold your soul for it, man. All right? This is James 5 and 1. Go to now, ye rich men, weep and howl for your miseries that shall come upon you. You see that? The Lord says more miseries are going to come upon those that are rich. Your riches are corrupted and your garments are moth-eaten. All right? Your riches are corrupted, man. That's corruption. The volatile stock market, a job loss, right? Uh, uh, more competition out there, less uh, less real estate deals being made. That's rich. Your riches are corrupted because now you're like, how do I come back from this? Okay? It says your gold and silver is cankered and the rust of them shall be a witness against you and shall eat your flesh as it were fire, right? It's going to destroy them. Ye shall heap, you have heaped treasure together for the last days. And that's why they're trying to hold on to this money. That's why they're trying to get bunkers. That's why they're trying to get gold and silver. More people are buying gold at record rates. But hey, all that's going to be not for them or it's going to be a complete loss. They're going to lose their lives in the process. This is Ecclesiastes 9 and 11. I returned and saw under the sun that the race is not to the swift, nor the battle to the strong, neither yet bread to the wise, nor yet riches to men of understanding, nor yet favor to men of skill, but time and chance happening to them all. You see that? So, hey, y'all time and chance for the rich to feel what it feels like to be poor. And, you know, the brother by Arby talking about this in the camp. They're not going to know what to do. You know, Jake know what it's like to be poor. Most Jake know what it's like to be poor and be down and out. But the Edomites... And these two thirds that have sold their souls, they're not going to want to know what to do. But guess what? Your time is coming too. Okay. Isaiah 61 and 6. This is going to be in the kingdom of heaven. It says, But ye shall be named the priests of the Lord Yahweh by Shemel Shai. Men shall call you the ministers of our power. Ye shall eat the riches of the Gentiles, and in their glory shall ye boast yourselves. So we're going to be glorying and boasting ourselves in the kingdom of heaven because of the riches that we're going to be taking from the wicked, man. Okay, that's biblical prophecy. All right, this is um, Ecclesiastes 25 and 2. Three sorts of men my soul hateth, and I am greatly offended at their life. This is the most high, how he feels about certain men. A poor man that is proud, and we get a lot of poor men like that. It's the worst, man. Like, bro, you broke and you still full of pride. You won't humble down and learn the scriptures, and you and you poor out here? That's terrible. A rich man that is a liar, we run into them all the time, right? Rich men, dudes that got money, right? And they send them, what you got a lot for when you rich? Hey, that's what, like, they say you got Trump. You talking about you got that fucking money? Like, what you, when you rich, what you got a lie for, bro? <laughs> you can be honest all the time because your money should be able to take care of everything you got. But see, rich men, when a rich man is a liar, he's a thief. He steals from people. He robs people. He finds another way to get, get, over, get over on you. It says in an adult, old adulterer that doteth, okay? So I got one more uh, section I'm going to get, then I'm going to wrap it up. This is Ecclesiastes 13. I'm going to start at 9. It says, If thou be invited of a mighty man, withdraw thyself, and so much the more will he invite thee. Press thou not upon him, lest thou be put back. Stand not afar off, lest thou be forgotten. Right? It says, Affect not to be made equal unto him in talk. And believe not as many words. So a lot of times people be put in certain situations. Hey, man, let that, let that dude be rich. Let him boast. Let him do his thing, man. You know, stay out the way. It says, for with much communication, he will tempt thee and smiling. So Lockyer, Jake had a phone call. But it says, uh, uh, um, smiling upon thee, he will get out thy secrets, right? Esau, you know, Esau and rich dudes, they'll try to get out, try to pull out of you what you know. Really, he's trying to see more ways that he can make more money and try to rob you or something. But really, he's trying to he's trying to get over on you, right? So you got to be wise when you're dealing with people that got money, all right? That's how they get That's how they get more money, is hearing the things people got to stay, stealing your ideas, stealing, uh, that's how patent, people getting patents, you know? And he's trying, even if, you, even if it's the truth, he want to get the truth out of you. I'm talking about, about the Bible, just so he can seek how to overthrow you and, and get you locked up. So in them last in these last days, hey, be careful who you. We know we want to prophesy the truth, but hey, you got to be mindful of a man that's trying to get over on you and put you lock you up. It says, but cruelly he will lay up thy words and will not spare to do thee hurt, and to put thee in prison. You see, he ain't gonna spare to do thee hurt. 
Like, oh, he an Israelite. Lock him up, man. Throw away the key. Get him away from me. I'm tell you, you talking about the so-called white nation and the, the rich going down? He going to be like, man, fuck this dude. Because all he care about is money. <laughs> okay? It says, observe and take good heed, for thou walkest in the peril of thy overthrowing. When thou hearest these things, awaken thy sleep. Love the Lord all thy life and call upon him for thy salvation. That's what they're supposed to be doing. But that's what we're doing through the spirit and power of Yahweh Shem El Shai. But they're not doing that. We love the Lord all our life and we call upon him for salvation. But they be like, man, shit, I got to find a way to get this come up, get this bankroll, you know? That, that, that's what's going to help me out. They talking to the money like it's, a, like it's a guy, you know? Come on, Benjamin Franklin. You know what I'm saying? It says every beast loveth his like and every man loveth his neighbor, right? They they hey, they like being around rich people like being around other rich people. Okay? It says all flesh consorted according to all kind and a man will cleave to his like. What fellowship hath the wolf with the lamb? So the sinner with the godly, right? So just like a wolf and a lamb don't got nothing to talk about because they trying to a wolf is trying to eat a lamb. That's what the sinner is to the godly. Try to get you messed up. Try to throw you off your path. It says, what agreement is there between the hyena and the dog? And what peace between the rich and the poor, right? There's no true peace because the rich don't really understand. Even if they have been poor before, they have forgotten. You know, yesterday we were, um, uh, a brother was telling me a story about how a guy helped him out with something just because his car wasn't working. But he said he ain't had no money. And the guy, he ended up cash up in the guy. But I said, he said, the dude looked out for him. And I was like, man, if our society was like that, if all Israelites were like that, you know how much more harmonious our, 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 we could work and grow as a nation. But we know that two-thirds not on that wavelength, in the, in the, on wavelength, in the, in the kingdom of heaven, we're all going to be on the same plane, the same mental path as far as righteousness. We're going to be willing to help out our fellow man. But a lot of times you can't do that with Jake. Nah, Jake be trying to rob you and shit, you know? It says, um, as the wild ass is the lions prey in the wilderness, so the rich eat up the poor. So as they losing more money, they're going to be trying to find more ways to hustle you, to swindle you, to get money over on you. You know, it said, as the proud hate humility, so do it. The rich abhor the poor. So they really look down on you, man. If you can't make them, no, if it don't make money, it don't make sense to them. All right. But hey, man, hey, y'all going to start to feel broker and broker. Hey, and these, as this dollar coming collapsing. You know, uh, Russia and Iran have given up the dollar, all right, making no longer making trades with the U.S. dollar. Hey, this thing is about to go all the way down, man, through the spirit and power of Yahweh Shem El Shai, and we're grateful for it, okay? So you got to think about where your mind's at. What's your spirit on in these last days? Who are you trying to serve, man, you know? As for me and my house, we will serve Yahweh Shem El Shai, all right? So, hey, Lord willing, this lesson was edifying. I want to give all the praise, all the honor. And all the glory to Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rahakodash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone who rule well. And peace and mercy to the elect. Until next time, Shalom.